Hello and welcome to our webinar. The time is 2.59 Eastern Time, and our program will start promptly at 3 o'clock. Uh, please notice on the screen in front of you, um, you should see a view of the control panel. During today's webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter your question into the field provided and hit send. Um, if there's time, uh, at the end of the program, we will go ahead and try to get to as many of your questions as we can. If not, rest assured that we are recording all of your questions and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if for any reason you have to leave the webinar this afternoon, we are recording it and we will be sending out a link um, within 24 to 48 hours after the program's concluded so that you can watch it in its entirety and review the information. We're going to be covering a lot of information in a very short period of time. So again, please sit back, relax. We are going to start the program in just a moment. Okay, let's get our program started. My name is Bob Wilgus, and I am one of your presenters this afternoon. I'm going to introduce my co-panelists in just a minute. But our program today is entitled LinkedIn, How to Optimize Your LinkedIn Program, uh, Your LinkedIn Profile, um, Increase Your Engagement, and Generate Prospects. As many of you know, social media has been on the rise for several years now. And LinkedIn had a reputation um, as being primarily kind of like an online job search networking um, social media website, but it's become so much more than that. For today's business professionals and my guest uh, panelist, Scott Kasperzik, who I'll introduce to you in just a minute, will also testify to how it's impacted his business and, and, and also share throughout this presentation how you can leverage LinkedIn um, to help generate leads as a passive way using social media. It's very different from traditional uh, methods of lead generation. But again, we're going to be covering an awful lot in a very short period of time. So um, if you'd like to take notes, you can. But again, we are recording it. If you have any questions, um, you can submit them. Again, if we have time during the program, we will get to as many of them as possible throughout the presentation. So what I'd really like you to do is sit back, relax, and try to capture all, of, all that you can um, in this short period of time um, as we cover how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Joining me on the call today is Scott Kasperzik. He's a national account executive here at RME. Scott, um, thank you for joining me today on the call. Thanks, Bob. A um, little bit about myself. Prior to joining RME uh, 12 years ago, I worked m almost my entire professional career in the financial services industry. I've worked for um, insurance and investment companies like GE Financial Assurance, um, Phoenix Funds, Phoenix Mutual, and a little par whole life company you might have heard of called Lafayette Life out of Lafayette, Indiana, also Prudential Financial. And so much has changed in the areas of marketing and lead generation and what we're going to focus on today is LinkedIn. It's a great and really robust program that's really changed over the last couple of years. And so in the next half hour or so, I hope that we can share with you um, seven or eight simple, quick, easy, and effective ways to update your LinkedIn profile to help you network more, engage prospects, um, and also generate new prospects um, to your firm. What's on our agenda today? What are we going to cover? First, really simply, if you haven't really used LinkedIn or don't really know how much it's changed in the last three or four years, we're going to cover that. And we're, we've got basically three segments of today's program. Optimizing the basics of your profile. Those are must-haves, things you just got to do um, if you really want to leverage LinkedIn. The next one is enhancing your profile. Some next steps after you've gone past the basics that are critical and important as you become a more active user in LinkedIn. And also the last section, which is utilizing LinkedIn applications. Um, according to recent research, almost 75% of all business professionals and boomers use some sort of social media every single day, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. And from a business pers per perspective, more than 60% of businesses and business professionals have at least some sort of a LinkedIn uh, presence. So this has become a much more critical part of anyone's individual personal or corporate social media strategy. And of course at the end we'll try to get to um, as many questions as we possibly can. 
Okay, let's cover what is LinkedIn. On the right-hand side, I found this great um, infographic that talks a little bit about what LinkedIn is, but it is primarily an online social network for business professionals. Um, it's the number one destination for professional networking. So this is not like Facebook where you're talking about where you're on vacation or what you're doing at a given time. It's much more targeted to a business audience and therefore how you say what you say and how you present yourself really should reflect that. And as you can see, there are over 200 million users worldwide and two new users join LinkedIn every second. So if you think for a second that having a social media presence on LinkedIn isn't critical for developing um, business connections and business networks, as well as really getting in touch with things that are happening out there, um, you're probably missing the boat. So that's one of the other reasons why we've, we've had so many um, advisors and business professionals sign up for today's webinar, because they know it's growing and it's become a very active um, piece of a company's and an individual's marketing strategy, specifically as it applies to social media. And one of the things that I really want to touch on um, is the word networking. Uh, many of us in the business world, whether we go to Civitan or Kiwanis or, or business meetings, or whether we go to, um, we have seminars or we have other ways of prospecting, those are face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and interactions. Believe it or not, because LinkedIn has become so much more robust and so much more used by business professionals, this is a very effective way of keeping in touch and communicating with not only prospects, but colleagues. And, and businesses that you that really fit your business mold and who you're trying to attract. It's a great way of communicating, sharing your thoughts and perspectives, and also listening. It's a very unique platform under which you can use your skills and talents and, and, and distribute that information that you're trying to get across, as well as listen. So um, the first section that we want to talk about is optimizing the basics. And in the next couple of slides, we're going to go through the following how to use a professional photo, where to put it, how to use keywords in your title and throughout your, your uh, profile, um, listing your prior positions, how to endorse others. That's a very unique and powerful little tool that was released a little over a year ago and, and we'll actually show you on Scott's um, profile um, how that looks and how it works. Giving and getting recommendations, not your, your your parents are probably your old way of getting recommendations on what you used to do on a resume. This is on your LinkedIn profile, and it's a really effective way of getting people to say something about you online um, that's, that's um, live, and it's candid, and it's honest, and it's really up to date. So that's a very unique and powerful part of your LinkedIn profile. And then utilizing the summary section of LinkedIn. This is not like what you used to do. Um, solely on your resume, you know, that, that first paragraph that most of us put at the top of our resume. This is a little bit different, and we'll show you how that works um, in the next couple of slides. So let's get right to it. Before we do that, if any of you out there um, have been using LinkedIn in the last month or so, you'll notice that there's been some significant changes in LinkedIn. This is what my LinkedIn profile looked like about a month and a half ago. You notice at the top there's the little red flags and it had the people in the search button as you see in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Um, and it had all the, the navigation buttons that you see here, home, profile, contacts, groups, jobs, all that stuff up there. Well, a couple of weeks ago they released a brand new and cleaned up um, release of LinkedIn. And so we want to make sure that if you just jumped back in, uh, you haven't used LinkedIn in a while, you'll notice that the navigation bar at the top has changed. All the functionality is there, and they've added some additional functionality. Um, I don't know if any of you use Twitter, but they're using the and um, hashtags and um, such into theirs, but we're not going to touch on that right now. Just so that you know, if you haven't already done it um, there and logged in recently, there have been some changes to the LinkedIn profile and the, and the site itself. So. Um, don't panic. We'll actually show you in today's webinar um, how we've gone ahead and actually adapted our profiles to the change. It's actually a really neat, um, some neat upgrades that they've offered. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you think about your profile is your goal is to make it 100% complete. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over to Scott's profile. You should see it right now. 
and before our call today, Scott was bragging about how um, his profile strength. He's an all-star. As you can see, he's almost was almost a 99% complete, um, and so he's got a very strong profile. That really, at the end of the day, folks, that should be your goal: is to make your profile as complete as possible. Scott, did you want to touch a little bit about uh, what your profile looked like before you went through this training? Well, I mean, again, I was missing a lot of bits and pieces. I mean, some of the things that we're going to touch on with it is really kind of optimizing it and utilizing the keywords uh, within the profile. But even I had old picture on there, not an up-to-date picture. Um, I included, you know, some of the things that we do, such as the seminar marketing and then also the one-on-one -on -one, uh, appointment program. So I optimized that and added more keywords. Uh, along with updating some of my past information, uh, such as my college experiences, um, you know, as far as what I did with that. And I'll talk a little bit about how I've been able to connect some people through, you know, that I used to go to school with or at some point was at my school. Um, so, again, it's just going through and really fine-tuning and even the, to the point of when I'm linking up and pulling up, for example, articles and also sure. liking those just to give myself more visibility. So. Think about that, folks, and this is the great thing about LinkedIn now is it's got that little meter. As you go through, and it's got a kind of a built-in wizard, you'll see as you log in that it prompts you to update your uh, information. So don't feel like if I'm going fairly quickly, because I do want to keep this to right around a half an hour um, and, and want to get through everything in the program today, but just, just note that um, LinkedIn does prompt you through the whole process, but your goal before you finish your, your programming on your site is to try to get it 100%. Okay, let's get back to the basics here. Using a professional um, photo. If you have a business photograph, that obviously is ideal. Something recent, especially if you're a business professional and you want to actually meet any of the people that you talk with on, face, on um, LinkedIn. You want to make sure it reflects what you look like. So taking pictures and posting them from 10 or 15 years ago, while it may make you feel better, the reality is you really should have a photograph that represents who you are and what you look like right now. Um, whether you want to pay and go to a professional photographer, but you know folks, almost every smartphone and, and cell phone has a really decent camera. So go ahead and find one, and again, you saw what Scott's looked like. He took his clearly. It looks like you used a, a cell phone. Yes, Scott? Yeah, I was actually at a, a conference for a corporate group we work with. And, you know, I just thought it was a good backdrop as far as to update my photos. So I just, you know, as you can see, I just did kind of a headshot, but also tried to capture some of the activity in the background. And, folks, changing anything on your profile is very, very easy. It made it very easy to edit, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a second. But I want to kind of tease what we're going to talk about later on in the, in, the, in the webinar about using apps to update your status and if you're on the road someplace. So when Scott was at this, at this event, if we scroll down, um, he probably put down where he was. So actually having a picture on his profile of him at this convention and then posting status updates or activity updates um, really makes to your audience out there that you're engaged and you're, and you're actually using it to communicate and share your thoughts and where you're at and what you're doing at the time. The other thing after you've got that photo is using keywords and in the title and the summary and the headline, and I'm going to show you that in a second and also to search if you don't know what to, to write, because not everybody knows how to write effectively for LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to show you in just a second how to do that. And the other thing is to update your, your past experience, at least three. If you're an independent business owner, um, that might cover many, many years. But at the end of the day, if you've got your last three positions, at least in your, in your um, profile, that's a minimum that you want to have on there. So let's jump back over here, because as you saw in the program, uh, in the slide, it said there's a couple ways to do it. One is through Google AdWords, and the other is actually using LinkedIn to find out what other people are doing. So let's type in financial advisor, just for fun. And let's see how many people we've got here as a financial advisor. So I'm just going to pick one person um, in general that might be here, and let's see, Frank Petroselli. So let's see what Frank put down on his LinkedIn profile. So he's a financial advisor, and there you go, what you see right here. 
I'm an independent financial advisor specializing in finding the right solutions to help you meet your financial goals, numerous financial services company. You can actually use that same process by actually going right up here in the search window, uh, the search field, and scrolling through and just reading what other advisors or other professionals, whatever your business is, and finding out what how they describe themselves. And that's a great way of getting some copy ideas on filling in your profile. How do they put their title in there? Again, as you see on my profile, um, I put down Director of Business and Product Development, RME, the city I'm from. So I actually went ahead and Googled Business and Product Development and got some information and got some ideas from there. So that's a good way. I also wanted to show you how to do it on Google AdWords. I typed in, um, and you literally go to Google and you type in Google AdWords, and it'll take you to this page. And you type in a word or a phrase, and you hit search. And as you can see right now, there are 673,000 people on LinkedIn right now that have the words financial advisor in their job title. Um, and other keywords that go with it. And you can see they're all highlighted in dark, bold, blue. If I wanted to type in Tampa, I could then find out how many advisors in Tampa are actually on here. And if we go down here, we can see there's 368,000 local monthly searches, and there's 100 um, in Tampa. So it's a good way to go ahead and do this and find out some keywords to add to your LinkedIn profile because that will help when you're here, as you can see on Scott's. So I'll jump back, take a quick look back on Scott's. So you can yeah, see Bob, let me, like. uh, let me jump in real quick. I actually have some statistics up. I had um, you know pulled together how many times I mentioned uh, different things. For, so, for example, uh, financial I mentioned three times. Seminar I've mentioned eight times. Uh, event I mentioned it five times. Appointment two times. Client acquisition four times and marketing 17 times. Um, so whenever I, I've been able to search for marketing or financial marketing, it's optimized my search to where if somebody is searching for those type of services through LinkedIn, it actually brings me up through one of the top five searches as far as within that. So this so is as you can fortune. No, you're right. And again, there's great algorithms just like there is in Google. When people are searching for someone like you on LinkedIn, the more of those keywords you have in your LinkedIn profile, the higher up you're going to show up in their search engine results. So kind of think about that when, you, when you're writing it to make sure that you've got, as you saw with, with Scott, um, marketing strategy, seminars, lead generation, media placement, search engine optimization. All of those are embedded in his background. Um, and that's going to help drive him when someone types in those keywords into the search on LinkedIn. Um, as I said, don't forget, you want to make sure that you do at least um, three of your, um, your past uh, job positions. And again, if we look quickly at Scott, we'll go ahead and scroll down. There's his current experience. And then as I scroll down, you'll see National Marketing Consultant, Credit Advisor, some of the projects that he's working on and some of the things that he's doing, his skills, education. Again, there is very much a resume feel to it. But remember, this is part of a website that actually has search engine algorithms running behind it. So again, as you type things in here, thinking about who might be looking for you, keep that in mind when you're writing the copy and you're putting in your, your key capabilities. That's going to help drive you towards the top of that search results if anybody's looking for a financial advisor or whatever your profession is uh, moving forward. Again, here's mine. Um, so I use my key companies because I joined RME after working for 15 years with other companies. So in case anybody was trying to network with me, they could find me. And I used insurance companies, broker dealers, RIAs, independent marketing organizations, financial advisors. Those are keywords that I use. So if anybody was looking for a marketing professional who worked with financial advisors or any of my companies, it would be very easy for them to find them. Also, make it a little bit personal. Remember, this is a social media. It is still a social media um, outlet. So don't be afraid to have a little bit more in there about yourself, if your wife, your family, your hobbies. That's OK as well, because that still keeps a little bit of the social part of LinkedIn in place. 
Okay, so let's look quickly at how do you continue your optimize your process. So you've updated your title, you've added your background, you've added your three, um, at least three of your past jobs, and you put in an, an, a good uh, profile picture. How do you start drawing people to your LinkedIn profile? Well, one of the easiest way is to endorse people um, and they will endorse you in, in, in turn. So as you can see here on the screen, what you do is you log in and at the top of the search engine, you type the name of someone that you know, someone in your past, one of your co-colleagues, um, someone in your neighborhood, what have you, type in their name and if they're in LinkedIn, they'll show up. As you can see, um, I put in Amy Romero. She's one of my colleagues here at RME. I selected her profile. It brings me to her page and right at the top, as soon as you log in, as soon as it brings you to that page, it says, does Amy have any of these skills or expertise? So you can add or delete any one of those preloaded um, skills, and then you click the yellow button, endorse. That sends the message to Amy or whoever else you're endorsing that says, Bob Wilgus has just endorsed you for the following skills. I will tell you that historically, 60 to 70 percent of the time within a week or so as people get those if they're an active user they will reciprocate and log into your profile page and add skills and endorse you so let's take a look at Scott and I'll type in my name and I'll go ahead and do the search and there he is so when he comes here let's see what happens there it is. Does Robert have these skills? Um, he's lead generation. Now I can add more. So if I wanted to type in public relations, it highlights that, and then I say endorse. Now m my profile, I get an email from LinkedIn that says Scott Kasperzik has just endorsed you. And then it, as you can see, see how easy this is, folks. I could sit here or Scott could sit here and go through each one of these people and go through an endorsement. And literally while you're drinking coffee in the morning or you're winding things down at the end of the day, you could go in and endorse people very, very quickly. And you'll be surprised how quickly those people reciprocate that endorsement. So endorsing is a very quick and easy way for you to go ahead and start drawing people to your, um, to your profile. Another way is to actually go ahead and give a recommendation. Remember when you left a job or you had a friend or a colleague and you were changing positions, you say, hey, would you write me a recommendation? Well, this is LinkedIn's way of doing that. And it's a very, very easy way to do it. So if you go down to where Scott, I'm going to just show you where Scott's recommendations are. As you can see, Scott's received and given two and he's received five. So these are some of the people that have gone in and actually written a recommendation for uh, for Scott and they go ahead and write that in there it's a very neat way again if he wants to do that for me and I'll go ahead and do that one more time just so you can see what that looks like it's a great thing about LinkedIn it's very fast and it's very intuitive that's going to go ahead and pop up again so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down Scott would you like to recommend Robert so if Scott was writing a recommendation for me he would go ahead and click that and then it walks you through this neat little and I'm going to show it to you on this screen it walks you through this little wizard where it asks you to tell you are they a colleague a service provider a business partner a student um, you can then go ahead and actually create your recommendation then you click send and then it sends me a notification that Scott just recommended me again you can see it right here um, on the on the profile that he just went to he would put down colleague because that's what I am and I would press continue and he would go ahead and and um, fill out the form that you see right here but you see how quickly and easily it is again in the same way that we did the endorsements recommendations for me again my my experience has been I save my recommendations for for key colleagues and professionals that I interact with or have interacted with in the past and sometimes um, they ask me specifically will you come in and make a recommendation for me usually it's for people who might be changing jobs or if they're really making an active role in looking for prospects so recommendation is a very strong and powerful 
um, uh, functionality in LinkedIn. That's very easy to do. And again, the more you recommend people, the more people will recommend you. Any thoughts on recommendations, Scott, before I, I move on? Well, it, it's interesting. Like, if guys, if you're not great at writing recommendations, uh, just a little tidbit um, that I've put out there for people before when they've asked me about this. There is actually endorse, endorsement generators out there where you could put in some information and it'll actually kick them out for you and kind of keep cycling through until you find one that you like. But I definitely tell everybody, you know, the more that you can create linkage as far as to other people or create activity for you, it's only going to improve how people see you, um, not only as far as through LinkedIn, but then also they're searching you specifically through, uh, say, Google, for example. Great. Um, quick summary here, folks. We're, we're at the end of the first section. And what you see here on this review is we talked about photos, keywords, and you can see the magic number is three. You should have at least, the first time you go in to update your LinkedIn profile, make sure you've got at least three of your past positions, spend that extra five or six minutes and endorse three other people, and then try to give um, and, and see if you can get three recommendations. But again, that's your, that's your challenge, and, and try to do that. But you think about the number three when you go in after you've gone through this webinar and try to get at least three of those things done. And again, utilize that summary section because as you see, this is the first thing you see on someone's LinkedIn website. Again, Scotty just updated his, his activity, um, but this is what people see right when they log in and see your profile the first time. Okay, let's go on to the next section. You've gone through the basics, you got that done. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to show you how to create a vanity URL, which is putting your name at the end of the LinkedIn.com URL, how to adjust your settings to make sure people can find you when they do the searches on LinkedIn, um, how to link on uh, why it's important to link to other social media sites, connecting with colleagues, um, using your email platforms that you have, um, joining professional groups, and following companies. And this is a teaser. Um, um, to you folks out there who are thinking uh, on the subject matter of lead generation. And, and following companies is a great way of not only getting some great um, intelligence about what's going on in their company, because it doesn't matter what size they are. A lot of companies are utilizing LinkedIn to post status updates on products and services and changes in staff, et cetera. This is a great way of getting information about key decision makers as well as their social media managers about a company finding out what's going on, do they have needs, and, and it's kind of a, a good way of kind of peeking in through the windows, but they're actually posting it out there on, on, on their LinkedIn profile. So this is what we're going to cover in the next couple of minutes. Enhancing your profile. As you can see on the screen right now, my URL at LinkedIn is www.linkedin.com slash in slash bob.wilgus. Seems kind of clunky, but it makes it very easy because the Bob Wilgus is how people will find me. So Robert Wilgus is my proper first name, but my vanity URL is Bob Wilgus. So if someone typed in either of those, as you can see when I typed it in, I showed up as the first person on the search engine. So let's actually show you how you go ahead and do that. As you saw in the prior slide, the key thing to do anything when you're editing your profile is to actually click the Edit Profile link. As you can see, I'm back here on, on Scott. If you click Edit, it puts you into the Edit mode. If you put your mouse over the little drop-down arrow, it shows how to ask to be recommended, share your profile, export it, and manage your public settings. We're going to touch a little bit on that, but as you can see, literally you click it like that, and it brings everything into the Edit mode. So folks, this is where when you log in in the prior section and anytime you're going to be updating your profile where you see the little pencil, that's click to edit, and that's how you actually get in there and change whatever's there. And once you've done that, you can click done editing. But we're going to actually talk about how to create that boutique URL with your name in it. So anytime you see the little pencil, that means you can go in there and change whatever is currently shown. So you click edit profile, and then you click the little blue edit button. That actually takes you into the editing mode on how to create that URL. It then takes you into this little section here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see your current URL. This is me right now because it was already done. But you customize your public URL by clicking that link, and it actually takes you to this screen 
where you actually go ahead and type in your name. So if I wanted to put in Robert Wilgus, which is my proper name, but almost nobody ever calls me Robert, so I wanted to put it, which my normal business vernacular that I use, literally it's type your name in there and hit custom URL. The only time that might change is if you have um, a common name, John Smith, Ken Jones. You might need to change that. So it will pop up and let you know if that's already taken. And you can continue on. You might do R dot A, R A Wogus, any variety of things. But it will allow you to go ahead and once you put that in there, you click, click set custom URL and you are ready to go. And that's how you got um, into creating the URL. That's critical again for search engine optimization within LinkedIn. That's how people are going to find you. Um, okay, moving along quickly. This is the next section, and this is kind of critical because it actually sets your profile, programs your profile on how to be seen by others when they're on LinkedIn. So this is privacy settings as well as do you want to make certain things public and certain things not public. And again, the great thing about LinkedIn is you can change these um, as needed. But you go ahead onto your um, profile, you, you put, hover over the little mouse down area and click manage public profile settings. And again, we're back at Scott. And um, if you saw that, we're going to go ahead and back up one just so you can see how easy it is in real life. Just like this, manage public profile settings. And it will quickly take you over to this right-hand side here. It says customize your public profile settings. Let's go ahead and jump there so you can see it easier. This section here I've highlighted in blue. Control how you appear when people search for you on Google, Yahoo, Bing, and all the other search engines. So obviously you can see on this one I've actually opened everything up. I've got my public profile. I've got my name, my picture, my headline, my per current positions, past positions, skills, education education, the groups that I've joined. And if you look at Scott's, he's done the same thing. If you don't want to show your past positions, you don't have to make that searchable. Remember, this is what happens when someone's on a search engine and they're entering information. It's gonna, these search engines are going to go out and scour the web and look for those keywords. Remember the words keywords that I talked about before with Google keywords? And um, those are things that they're going to look for. So literally just by clicking and not clicking, you can actually turn those things on and off and make them searchable. A real critical part once you're updating your profile to make sure that when people want to find you, you make it really easy for them to do so. Scott, any thoughts so far about anybody who's um, found you, um, whether it's through um, past business associates, uh, former colleagues, etc.? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I've had some people, uh, especially through like school, that are in different vertical markets. Actually, there's a, a guy that's in the Lakeland area uh, that is a former former student of my or my college that actually owns a number of franchises out there that it ended up turning into a, a quick conversation with them to see if there's anything that we can help them as far as on the marketing side. Um, you know, as far as um, other people I've been able to link up with, um, kind of give you some ideas. Um, I've been able to network through with corporate groups as far as CEOs of the organizations to talk to them on the corporate level down even to individual financial advisors that came through connections uh, of mine that had a need or an interest as far as trying to generate some additional prospects for their business. Important because as you look at the top of the screen where, where I'm, I've highlighted this search engine, imagine that to be like a Google search engine within LinkedIn. So all of whatever you type in there for keywords is going to scour LinkedIn. So the more information you have on your site and your page, the easier it is for people to find you. And also when you're looking for a specific prospect, um, say you're trying to, to reach uh, physicians in, in um, Orlando, Florida, you could type in um, physicians Orlando, Florida. It'll bring up an entire list. That's a very easy way of looking at who's out there on LinkedIn. Are they actively involved? Again, engage. When you reach out, on LinkedIn, most times people will reach back to you. Um, a quick thing about uh, linking your LinkedIn profile on Facebook and Twitter. Now, back in the day several years ago, you could actually, if you have Twitter, you could actually post whatever your status was on LinkedIn to Twitter and vice versa. That's since been shut down, and there's really no really effective way of, of 
of putting those two things together right now. They kind of cut that off about six months ago. But Facebook does allow you to update and, and send your statuses back and forth. And you actually have to go on each website. I didn't want to drill down too deeply on it. But if you Google link my LinkedIn to Facebook or link my Facebook status to LinkedIn, it will take you to a website which shows you in very like five or six clicks how to do it. But the key thing is because of privacy, and anybody who's on social media now knows and what's been going on in the news, privacy is critical. Each one of these applications, these websites, require you um, to go ahead and give each of those sites permission to talk to each other. Um, it's, a, it's an important safety tip, uh, obviously from a privacy perspective, but if you're thinking about a social media strategy in general, and I would strongly encourage you guys to do that because Again, I do a lot of the social media here at RME on our websites uh, and our social media platforms. And I can tell you all the demographic research that I've been doing when it comes to boomers. And we know that 10,000 boomers every single day are entering 65 in retirement years. And they are the biggest users. We're talking about from Facebook, I mean from a LinkedIn perspective. They are the most active users. The boomers are the most active users of social media. So it, it, it really should be a part of your overall marketing, communications, public relations, social media plan to have some sort of a presence on these websites. If you are, spend an extra few minutes to look at how to make it easy for you when you update your status or your activity on LinkedIn that it posts over on Facebook. Um, it's a very easy and quick way of, of taking care of your business posts on your on your Facebook page as well as Twitter. Okay, let's go to the next section of the enhancing your profile, and that's how do you get connected with your colleagues. If you just started or you haven't been on in a while, the great thing about LinkedIn, this is another new enhancement of theirs, they actually kind of raised it up in prominence in the new release. They make it really easy for you to go in um, whether you use Gmail or Yahoo or Hotmail or um, Outlook to go in and link your address book with the email addresses of your friends and colleagues to your LinkedIn and it basically sends them out a link that says hey I'm on LinkedIn and makes it easy for them to find you without having to log in to um, LinkedIn and type in your name. So literally I'm going to go back here to Scott as you can see right up here with that little plus sign is just mousing over it and you can see it shows you how easy it is for you to connect with your contacts by embedding them into um, your LinkedIn and literally as you can see Scott's already set his up for Outlook but you just put in your 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 email and your password and it will actually go in and grab those contacts and import them into LinkedIn and you can go ahead and send them an invitation to find you on LinkedIn and you can do that with any one of these Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail and almost any um, generally accepted email platform will allow you to go ahead and do that. The other thing is once you have, as, as you can see on Scott's, once you've already gone in and you log in, it will update if you want it to, to go in and update any new prospects or any new contacts that you have in your list. So this is a very fast and easy way without you having to manually click in all the names of the emails of your of your colleagues and your friends and your business associates. They made it very, very easy with just a few clicks to go ahead and import your contacts and invite them to find you and like you and visit your LinkedIn page. Again, simply easy click which your happens to be your choice, put your email and then follow the wizard and in just a few clicks it goes ahead and, and does that automatically. And of course, your contacts are safe with LinkedIn. They don't pull out any of your emails and they don't sell any of the emails. So privacy is obviously important. But this is a great little way of getting started if you've got a nice database, especially for those of you who are financial advisors. If you've got emails of prospects, if you've been doing lead generation and you've gathered emails, this is a great way to invite them to see you on LinkedIn and keep updated on what you're doing as a financial advisor, a marketing professional, what happens, whatever happens to be your profession. So if you've got a database of prospects or contacts that you'd like to have them you know, keep in touch with you, this is a great, fast, and easy way to do that. Um, I want to talk a little bit now about joining professional groups. And this is um, one of the really powerful segments of LinkedIn. And this a group on LinkedIn is basically a group of like-minded professionals who want to talk about a specific concept 
or thought or idea, need, um, product or service. And it's a great way, and I'm going to show you on uh, Scott's and on mine, how to go ahead and do that. So for me, if it's lead generation, prospecting, you literally can go up to the top of the menu bar under interests and find groups. And you can search for groups. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Once you're in the group section, you can there in the upper right hand corner you can see there's a little search bar. You type in the group idea that you want keywords. Remember that idea. The concept here is keywords. You hit enter and it gives you a list of groups that match that criteria. In this sense, this is mine. I've got e-marketing communications, association networks, managed care, marketing communications, senior market sales, those in media. Those are groups that I'm, I participate in and I can go in and actually join conversations, post my thoughts, respond to questions. These are like-minded professionals and so it's a great way. This is literally the coffee clutch. This is the when you're at a meeting and you're taking a break and you're actually networking with other people. Uh, people will ask questions, they'll ask for help, they'll ask for guidance, and you can do the same thing. Hey, has anybody ever used LinkedIn to generate leads? And you'll get a variety of people posting back to you. It is a posting board after all. That also puts down on the right hand side, as you can see on the screen, groups you may like, social media marketing, database marketing, and also cues in some companies that might be of interest to you. And if you look at Scott, um, let's go back to where Scott was, and we'll show you what his groups look like. Any thoughts on groups? I want to touch on this, Scott, while I'm bringing it over. What, what have you done in terms of groups that's been effective for you? If Scott's with me, he might, we might have lost him. I can show you where Scott was on the, uh, on the groups. So let's go ahead and look at groups. And what you see here is here's all of Scott's groups. Annuity Marketers of America, database marketers, and they all show up. And each one of these little uh, bubbles that you see there shows if people have actually talked about jobs or if they have to-do discussions. And these are great ways, so if you wanted to talk about senior marketing to seniors, this. Let's see if there are any in there. This will be a new one for me. Marketing to seniors. And as you can see, it shows all the other people who've got um, links to those groups. Very, very fast, very, very easy. And also on the right-hand side, you can see it prompts you to groups you may like. You can also start your own group. So if you wanted to talk specifically about your area, you know, Tampa Senior um, Financial Services or Tampa uh, Retirement Planning Questions, you can click that and actually create your own groups. And the more activity you have on there, uh, the higher up it shows up in the search criteria. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of answer your question, sorry, I had the, the, the phone muted real quick. Um, to answer your question as far as the groups, you know, a lot of the, the different groups I get involved with, either from a professional standpoint to pick up information to be able to share with my clients, um, you know, or some different trends and things that are in the marketing world, but then also groups, um, I've been able to post some information as far as on recent successes or create a discussion that helps me kind of come to a solution or an answer uh, for maybe a marketing piece that I'm putting together. So you leverage it for a lot for information, but I've also had people uh, connect with me and also reach out to me, you know, through these groups about inquiring about different programs and things that we offer. Okay, good, good, good point. Folks, groups are a great way for you to network with like-minded professionals if you have a specific question that you'd like to have answers and want to reach out to thousands of people who might have answers to your question or you might be able to help people who have a specific question. Um, it, it's really a great thing to do, especially when I do it usually is in the morning when I'm having my coffee and getting my day started. I'll quickly scan my groups to find out what discussions are going on that I might want to participate in or respond to any um, posts that were posted to my name. Um, here's another thing. For anybody who uses social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or in this case LinkedIn, updating your status regularly improves your status and your perception online. It really improves the engagement. It shows that it's not just a placeholder in your business. So in this case, as you can see, um, uh, participating in a linked 
in webinar. Literally with, I'm sharing with my connections, and as you can see, immediately updates. So anybody who's following me is then going to see uh, on my activity that Scott is participating in this webinar. Why is this important? Well, if you're on a business trip, you're at a convention, you're at um, a health fair, um, you're out with your friends or family someplace. This is a little bit different than Facebook, you know, checking in and things like that. This is something that's a little bit, obviously, since you're talking to business professionals and people in the business world are watching this. This is a great way, again, when you talk about if you're on the road, if you're at a sales conference, say, you know, at the ABC marketing convention. If there are other people in your industry or people that you're speaking at, uh, they'll be able to see that and follow that. You can obviously, when you're posting that to Twitter and other social media, it's a great way of, of generating buzz and interest of what you're doing. The other thing also is it shows when I'm going to click see more. You can see all of the things that Scott's been posting as he goes down. So he's been obviously doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it shows as people look at Scott, if they want to look at him, if he was a financial advisor or let's say he is a financial advisor looking for a marketing consultant and they found Scott on LinkedIn, they would scroll through his LinkedIn page to learn more about him. And so showing more than one or two posts in the last month shows that Scott actively uses LinkedIn. So I, that's why we wanted to make sure we touched in this, in this presentation that updating your status regularly is important. You don't have to write war and peace, folks. But use this to communicate to anybody who's out there what you're doing and, and what your thoughts are. Um, if you just came from a webinar or what you learned, um, it's a great way of generating activity as well as interest in engaging with the people that are following you. Hey, Bob, can I interrupt you real quick? Yep. All right, guys. So one thing I will tell you um, that I've noticed, and I, it's actually something you know I try to be mindful of, is you know there are some people out there that are pretty well, they're really active as far as on posting stuff up. So be very careful on if you're going on there every day and posting 10 different things because eventually what may happen is you may be clogging up their content and they're going to just end up hiding any kind of uh, messages or any kind of updates that you're adding to it because of overuse. So, right. you know, I like, I like to kind of touch on that a little bit. Be, you know, make sure you're active, but, you know, like Bob said, you know, don't make it war and peace. And well, we, we, we kind of the kind of colloquial term is stalkers um, and, or spammers or you know they, you just flood your website with too much stuff too often. Remember what I said a couple of slides back about the rule of three. Unless something really profound is happening in your business or that day or you're at you know if you're like at, at a convention or if you're speaking someplace, if there's a reason for you to be posting a lot, that makes sense. But don't just post for the sake of posting. Remember back a few slides I said three was the magic number? You really probably shouldn't post more than three times during the day. That should be your max. And it shouldn't be having a cup of coffee getting ready to start my day. That shouldn't be one of your three during the day. But if you think about the rule of three, um, in a standard, typical thing, you should probably post at least three times a week but you probably shouldn't post more than three times a day unless there's a reason for it. So kind of use that as a rule of thumb on, on the rule of three. But again, it's there for a reason. The, uh, the, the status update is there for a reason. I jumped ahead. Sorry, folks. Okay, let's talk quickly about companies. Now, this is the power of networking. And remember I told you that this is a great way to engage with a target company or organization, and it's also a great way of gathering intelligence about a company that you may be interested in doing business with or maybe you're going to make a sales call on them or you'd like to earn their business. Well, before you actually make your presentation or present yourself to them or before a meeting, going to that company's LinkedIn page and learning about what's going on is kind of critical. They make it really easy on um, LinkedIn to do that. At the top of the menu bar, you'll see again the search. You hover over the interest button and then type in companies. And I'll go ahead and show you that on Scott. Interest companies. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see what companies Scott's following. Well, he's got LPL, Wells Fargo, um, and you can see all of their updates are being posted in, in the profile um, on the search engine page. And they also, the great thing about algorithms and these, these social media websites is they will um, ping Scott and say, hey, you may want to follow Dun Bradstreet or Athene or Perfect Plastic. 
because there may be things on those companies' LinkedIn profile pages that have something that Scott's been looking for in the past. So it will go ahead and prompt him to say you might want to follow them. But again, once you're here, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did this, how easy it is to follow a company. You literally go ahead and type the name in, and in this case I typed in Starbucks. Um, I found the company. There's 10,000 plus employees. I, I highlighted it. I clicked it. It takes me to their website, and then as you can see in the upper right-hand corner of a company's webpage, it says follow. Literally, it's that fast. You type in the search under the companies. It brings up a list of companies that match that name. You click on that company. You go to their website. You click on follow. Now you're linked to their website, uh, to their profile, and you can scroll down and look at all of the company's activities. And so let's just go ahead and, and do that here on Scott. Starbucks. Let's go ahead and search. I'll show you how easy this is. Oh, sorry, I, Starbucks. I better put that in there correctly. Companies. It always will correct you. Oh, search companies. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Let's go to Microsoft. If I want to go ahead and follow Microsoft, now that I've clicked it in there, all I have to do is click follow. And then I'll be linked to their site. But look at all of the things that they're posting in here. Great way of finding out what's going on with a company before you make a call on them. Very fast, very easy, um, and it's a great way of doing that initial business intelligence research. Great um, search tool and a great uh, capability of LinkedIn. Hey Bob, uh, so, just to kind of, hey Bob, can I interrupt yep. you again real quick? Sure. Um, one, guys, one way for maybe from your standpoint, and you know, how is this going to benefit me? A lot of these companies give you the ability to go in there and actually search key people within the organization. So, for example, say you go in there and you sort it out by your particular market, and you want to try to go through there and connect because maybe you're working with somebody from that organization. So it gives you the ability to, you know, kind of do some, not espionage, but be able to see who are other people in there and get connected or get recommended uh, to those individuals. And it could open up an opportunity for you to sit down and talk to them specifically about their situation um, as far as from a planning standpoint. So what I would tell you is it's good to get involved and in, in, in tie these in because, again, it could give you a foot in the door to be able to talk to other people in the organization. Again, the key word on, on LinkedIn is networking. This really is what the site was all about from its inception, and that's really what powers um, how you navigate, what you get for responses. And again, here's an example of what the companies that Scott's following. And literally, you can drill down inside each one of these companies and find out who the decision makers are, if they're the active posters, um, if there's updates on them in terms of joining new staff, et cetera. Great way, again, business intelligence. You can never underestimate the power of knowing more about companies that you'd like to engage in in a business relationship. OK, quick review. Updating your, um, your, your profile to include a vanity URL, making sure that you set up your profile to make it easy for people to find, um, decide whether or not you want to, and try to link your social media sites that you have in your social media categories, become connected, Import your contacts, invite your friends and colleagues and prospects to like you and find you and follow you on your website um, in terms of LinkedIn. Join professional groups, comment and share, um, read as much as you want, great, great tool. Update your status regularly and follow companies that are critical to your business and what you're interested in, who you might want to prospect, um, who you might want to prospect to. Okay, we're almost done, folks. So. Thank you for bearing with me, really trying to keep this um, um, to under an hour um, in the program. Apps. According to a recent release um, uh, by Pew um, Research, 80% of all people 50 to 60 years old have a smartphone for business. And obviously, one of the most important parts of any smartphone are those apps that, that run both on the, the, the smartphone and almost all of them have a tie-in on um, the computer. So when you're thinking about your LinkedIn profile, you've updated the basics, you've got your, your, your 
profile set up, you've optimized it um, going through the process that we just went through. Okay, how do I now link some of these cool apps from whether it's an, an iPhone or a smartphone, um, Android, almost all of them have um, the apps for, for both types of phones. And I'm showing you three or four that are the most popular. And if you Google the, the, the words uh, uh, most popular LinkedIn apps for business, these are the ones that come up almost every single time, and that's why I wanted to highlight it. And so what you see is um, I've kind of put that little logo in the middle because sometimes you're at the office and you can use your computer, and they all work together from updating your profile to when you're actually doing things on your smartphone. So we're going to quickly touch on four of the key things, uh, the key apps that you might want to consider once you've gotten um, past the, uh, the, the basics and you've optimized your website, um, your, your uh, profile. Let's talk a little bit about them. Um, LinkedIn ads, SlideShare, TripIt, and um, Reading List by Amazon. LinkedIn ads are, are a way for you, very similar if you, any of you guys have done search engine optimization or pay-per-click. Um, LinkedIn ads has something very, very similar for that. And it's, it's a way to reach your ideal prospects. And LinkedIn makes it very easy for you to go in and either pay for a click or you can pay by impressions if people go to your page. And so um, when you go to the LinkedIn ad section on LinkedIn, it actually has an entire wizard of who are you looking for, what do they look and, and sound like online, and what are you trying to attract, who are you trying to attract. So it'll talk about geography, it'll talk about keywords. And on the right-hand side, I think Scott's got it over here. I'm going to go back to Scott's profile so you can see that there are ads. Um, see, ads you may be interested in, customers, delivery, respect, uh, Hardoop free register for SWAT. So these are companies on the right hand side that you see on the on the page. These are companies that are paying to show up on your LinkedIn page while you're online. If while you're doing company searches or you're updating your profile, they will appear randomly in your area um, and on your site, and it, they will prompt you to go ahead and respond. You can actually put those very similar ads on your website and on your profile as well. So very, very easy to do that. Note to self, these are pay per click. So you're going to be putting in some money into an account, and every time someone clicks on that ad, um, LinkedIn will take X number of pennies, dollars out of that account and um, count that towards your lead. So that's one that you're going to pay out of the pocket for. So that's one way of actually doing it right now by generating leads if you're prospecting for a company or an individual. That's one way to do it. The other three I'm going to show you here, SlideShare. It's a very quick and easy tool for sharing your business presentations or white papers. Speaking specifically about presentations, say that you do seminar marketing and you've got a presentation that you like and you use quite often. You could actually go ahead go to SlideShare, upload your presentation, and that way even if people haven't been able to make your seminar, so they want to learn about what you talk about, people can actually go there and view your SlideShare presentation and it's linked to your LinkedIn profile. Um, and it actually ties into your LinkedIn account. Very, very easy to install on your phone, very easy to install and, and create an account on your computer, and they all link together. You just say link them together and they, in a matter of clicks they do it. TripIt, very, very popular little application. And basically, this is a planning tool. So if you're, if you're uh, an on-the-road salesperson or you do a lot of travel for your business, um, especially if you cover a geographic area, or if you're a financial advisor and you work in three or four cities here, Scott and I are based out of the Tampa St. Pete area, um, we actually could be networking with people in St. Petersburg or Clearwater or Sarasota. If I'm taking a trip to meet a client in Sarasota, and I'm going to be spending the night somewhere, I might put in TripIt that I'm meeting with a client in Sarasota um, near the Ringling Museum. And that would send a, a message to not only how do I set it up, because TripIt's a great way of planning a trip. It also sends an update right back to your LinkedIn profile that says, I'm going to be at the Ringling Museum meeting with a client. And that way, if anybody else is looking for someone in that area, they could find me. If you're on a business trip, say you're going to a convention, um, if you're doing a business improvement seminar or what have you. If you use TripIt and update your status, it's not like Foursquare or checking in, 
but it, what it basically does is in one very easy way, once you get it set up, it will update your status and your location, where you're going to be, when you're going to be there, um, and it reflects not only um, in TripIt, but it also updates your LinkedIn profile as a status and activity update. The last one I want to talk about, and we're almost done, folks, is reading list by Amazon. And one of the things that a lot of financial advisors and business professionals are actually pretty good writers. And if you wrote a white paper on any subject matter, um, financial planning, you know, the top three things every baby boomer should know about retirement planning before turning 65, and I'm just pulling this out, out of the air. If you wrote that little white paper, you download and load up reading list by Amazon on your smartphone, and you also create that same account online um, through your, your office or your home PC. You can upload that white paper, and that white paper will link back to your LinkedIn profile and show that that's available for people to read and view if you want to go ahead and give it away for free. It's a PDF or a Word document. Again, what's great about that is if you're talking with someone in a discussion group about retirement planning, you can say, hey, go to this link, and you can actually, because it's linked to your profile, go to Amazon Reading List and download my free my free white paper on the three things every boomer should know about retirement before you turn 65. These all speak together and they all integrate to each other and they all help raise your engagement level and show that you're an active user in the LinkedIn world. Again, the more engaged you are in that online community um, and, and how you engage them in terms of adding benefits, adding information, sharing your thoughts at a very reasonable level in a business environment really shows you as a legitimate user um, in the world of social media, specifically in LinkedIn and the, in the business world. Um, so just think about that. Again, it's kind of an advanced thing. If you're techno savvy, it's probably, you're probably rolling your eyes. But if this is something that's still relatively new to you, know that these are the three things as we review what we've covered in today's webinar. Optimize your basics, photograph your, your um, status, your background, your history. Make sure you're using keywords. Enhance your profile with those that boutique URL. Follow companies. Find colleagues and upload your, um, your database so that people can find you. And then again, utilize LinkedIn applications. Just doing those three things. And, and literally, Scott, how long did it take you from after you went through this training to actually getting to where your page actually looks like it does now? How long did that literally take you if you added up the two or three times that you logged in to do it? Uh, you know, again, I'd, I'd put about 15, 15 minutes, I mean, roughly, as far as each time, just kind of updating some things and just kind of noodling around with it a little bit. So, right. you know, it really doesn't eat up that much time at all. And that was actually, as we get to the next the next point, there was a question that just said, how long does it take to do each segment? Um, and that's why I wanted to bring that up um, as a question and answer, which was, how long does it take you? Well, again, if you break it down, if you had 15 minutes every day, um, let's say this week, you could do 15 minutes for each segment, you could get your entire updated profile done in about a half an hour, those two sections. Again, the applications we were talking about might be something you need as you use. You might want to just kind of knock them around and, and play with it a little bit. But in 15 minutes, you can update the basics. And in 15 minutes, you can add three new companies. Remember that um, rule of three. You should really have three companies that you're following. You should um, have at least three colleagues that you're that you're connected with. You can never go wrong with three. Update your status and your activity at least three times a week, but don't do it more than three times a day. Um, and, and obviously, uh, one of the uh, people was asking about you know, can you get blacklisted on on um, one of the questions I just noticed was can you get blacklisted on on LinkedIn, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you can. <laughs> um, you know, you got to be careful about some of the people you're sending out to, if, especially if they don't know who you are. Um, what it will require then is um, once they put you on that list, it will require you to enter that person's email address. So, you know, again, work within your connections and and trying to get um, recommended to somebody. Um, otherwise, you have to go through a process of just saying, taking a slap on the hand, and if you continually do it, then, you know, again, you'll be blocked from inviting people over because of it. So I can say, yes, I've experienced that, um, and it's, it really does turn to a pain afterwards because you have to try to make sure you have your computer in front of you 
and enter everybody's email address in. So, but unfortunately, I was lucky enough to get unblocked. So, I'm I'm back on the right here. One of the questions um, we're almost out of time is the last question we'll get to, and if you any of the other questions that have asked folks, I'll get back to you, or Scott will get back to you, if depending on who you directed them to. But one of the questions was, can I specifically go into a group or a um, a discussion group and actually ask for, you know, say I'm looking for to help seniors with their retirement needs? The answer is, you could probably do it once, but that would be the only time you can do it. I remember a conversation I had with an, advi uh, an advisor who got literally got booted out of, there was a, a group, I think it was called Senior Talk, and literally it was a group of seniors talking to seniors about issues that seniors deal with, people in their 60s, uh, early to mid 60s. And he basically went on there and was, hi, I'm Joe Smith, a financial planner in Sheboygan, um, looking to help um, seniors with their retirement plans. And he went in every day for like five days in a row and updated that in that group. Well, within four days, he was banned from the group. He was basically just blocked out because they want people to participate and listen and be very subtle in how you help people because you wouldn't just walk up to somebody at a seminar or if you met them at a one-to-one -one consultation and say, hi, I'm Bob Wilgus. Um, how much money do you have, and can you give all of it to me so I can help you save for your retirement? It, it just wouldn't work that way. So there's an online decorum. Um, again, it is networking. So if you think about that, that you're meeting these people online, they're having a group discussion and in this discussion board. Be active but passive, and if that makes sense to you, which is you can content, you can add your content, but don't come across as um, pushy and don't come across as aggressive. Um, offer information, offer help, offer experience, offer stories. Stories are a great way when you're in groups and you're talking with people in the group section of LinkedIn. Telling stories is a great way of showing how you've helped somebody and what you did to help them. Uh, it's even better if that person's on LinkedIn and validates that. But again, baby steps when it comes to LinkedIn, folks. If you follow the basics, update your, your, your profile, um, get it up to date, be active on there, but not overactive. Engage with people, and they'll engage with you. Endorse and network, and you're going to be fine. Uh, again, any questions that you've got, you can see my email there, bob.wilgus at rmeleads.com. And I would appreciate it, being the, the social media guy here at RME. We would love it if you went to Facebook and uh, liked our company. Join us, join us on Twitter. I spend uh, a good bit of time every day scanning the internet timely information about um, what's going on in the area of boomers and seniors, retirement planning issues surrounding financial services, health care, but really focusing on the baby boomers and, and the Gen X and the millennials and the seniors, what their concerns are. I like to go ahead and reflect that. LinkedIn is very similar in that same way, but it's with a business perspective. So we'd really appreciate um, if you would spend a little uh, time to go out and find us on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and, and like us and follow us on, on LinkedIn. Um, as we draw to a close today, folks, I want to thank you for your time. I uh, hope this was helpful. I will be sending out a link so you can follow along step-by-step step this webinar and go ahead and update your uh, LinkedIn profile. And this is a teaser. In July, watch your email. We're going to be having a, a, another webinar. Uh, we're going to be updating best practices on seminar marketing. It's alive and well. A lot's changed in the last year, obviously with the rebound of the, the slow rebound of the economy, the strengthening of the of the financial services marketplace, the stock market's at an all-time high. Looks like housing's coming back slowly. So what's going on in marketing as it applies to seminars? Are still people coming? What are they talking about? So I really encourage you um, to watch your email for an invitation on our next webinar where we're going to be actually talking about uh, seminar marketing. And we're um, going to get George Villar, our founder and president here at RME, to talk about what he's been hearing uh, out on the street and also some of our financial advisor clients and, and staff here at RME to participate in what's going on. So if you've done seminars in the past and you're thinking about getting back to it uh, once the summer's over, if you're currently doing seminars and you want to get some best practices on what's new, what's not working, what is working, some trends, I encourage you to, to watch for that email and join us. But uh, as we bring it to a close, Scott, your thoughts on, on LinkedIn and, and how it's helped you work with financial advisors um, here at RME. 
You know, again, it, it, like Bob said throughout this presentation, it's it's such a great networking tool, and I think it really opens the doors to a lot of opportunities, and I'll leave it on this. And I'll give you this as an example. One of my clients, um, you know, we linked up, of course, on LinkedIn, and the CEO of his broker-dealer actually, you know, was one of his connections. So I'm like, you know what, I'll go ahead and try this out and see if I can get this introduction. Got the introduction. Um, and now we are working with one of the largest independent broker dealers in the country, and they brought us on board as their marketing vendor, or marketing vendor for seminars, and also our one-on-one, -on -one, and, and then also data. So you can kind of see what it leads to. So you know, take a look at it, guys. Measure how you can install or how you can put it in place for you, and then implement those things and stay consistent with it. Because again, you're going to see the benefits on the backside of your activity within this, not only with bringing on new clients, but also visibility to people that are searching you out there. Scott, great point. And again, all, like, as with all prospecting, when you're speaking to the world, whether it's the online world of, of LinkedIn, you've got to be out there all the time. You don't just drop one seminar invitation in the mail. You have to drop thousands, and you have to do it consistently. You have to be out there. We use the term fishing. You've got to have all your poles. Um, in the water. So whether you're doing seminars, whether you're doing one-to-one, -one, whether you're doing referrals, um, and then now you're integrating social media into it. Each one of these is a way to communicate to people. And one thing we've learned over over the decades here at RME since 2000, since 1995, is that prospects and clients are going to respond in a way that's comfortable and easy for them. And sometimes you have to get out there and be there for them. So. Think about social media. Think about how LinkedIn can help. And as always, we're here to help you. Um, and I just want to let you know as a close, we do and will be offering an audit of your um, social media. So watch your email. We're going to be announcing this product and this, and this audit of your, um, your LinkedIn profile as well as your social media, um, your overall social media status. Watch your email for that because we're actually offering an audit where you can uh, drop a little bit of money on our laps and we will have professional um, social media consultants review your social media platform and give you suggestions on how to improve it. So um, this was an easy do-it-yourselfer, and we're going to be uh, communicating with you folks in the very near future about some, some things that we're going to be doing in terms of social media to help you add that to your prospecting um, capabilities. With that, I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a great day. Have a great summer, and we'll talk with you very soon. On behalf of everyone here at RME and Scott Kasperzik, thanks, and have a great day.